Hey, thanks for joining us for another week of Growth Groups. Uh, this week we are considering the series Cross Cultural and how the cross is the culture of missions. We had uh, the guest from the Convoy of Hope, representative from Convoy of Hope, Jeff Swain, this past Sunday, and he did a great job telling us about all the outreach that Convoy of Hope, the Assemblies of God, does through uh, Convoy of Hope to minister to people at their point of in their in their time of need going to crises literally around the world and bringing relief and aid, but more than just relief and aid, bringing the message of hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here at Oak Park Christian Center, we've been supporting Convoy of Hope literally for decades now. And every time you uh, make an offering to missions, a portion of the offering that you make goes towards supporting Convoy of Hope. So I'm so glad that we get to be a part of reaching out to the world with compassion through Convoy of Hope. So thank you, Jeff, for coming and sharing with us this past weekend. And in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit deeper in the cross-cultural concept, how the culture of the cross is the culture of missions. You see, Jesus was the first missionary. He left heaven to come to earth, his mission field, to reach people with the good news. And that's basically what missionaries do. They they leave their home to go to a place that God calls them to, where people need to hear the good news, and they share the good news with them, and then, you know, faith comes through hearing, and, and people believe, and we support missions through our through our, our faith promises, which is really what this missions conference is all about, is about our church praying and going before the Lord and deciding if we'll, uh, what he wants us to do to make a faith promise. We've got these cards that we've been handing out. Uh, and every service started back at our prayer breakfast, we started handing them out. And uh, we're asking everyone to pray and seek God and see what God would have each of us to do to support missions, not just in prayer, but also in finances. And um, it's not a, a percentage, it's not an amount, it's above and beyond our tithe, but it's what the Lord lays on our heart, that's the faith part, and then we make a promise to do what the Lord lays on our heart, and we give it, and then when we do... This money, 100% of this, flows right out of Oak Park Christian Center directly to our missionaries, and it helps them to be able to be on the field and preach the gospel so that people can get saved. And that is cross-cultural. The culture of the cross is the culture of missions, and Jesus was the first missionary. Now, this passage I want to read today in our Growing Deeper section is, is uh, written by the Apostle Paul to the Romans. And I think it's very apropos for thinking of how the cross, the culture of the cross is the culture of missions. Let's read Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. It begins this way. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses, and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the promise of the gospel. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What a wonderful promise. But verse 14 is where it really gets missional. Uh, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? You see, one of the things that's interesting about the world we live in is everywhere in the world you can buy a Coca-Cola, but not everywhere in the world can you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's still about 2 billion people on our planet of about 7 billion people that have never heard of Jesus even once. And missions, the focus of missions, is bringing the gospel to people who have never heard about him so that they might hear about him so they can believe in him. 
And, and it goes on to say, and how are they to hear without someone preaching? In other words, someone needs to tell these lost people about Jesus. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So this, this is such a great passage that reminds us of the importance of preaching the gospel to people who haven't believed in Jesus yet. And there's the 2 billion, roughly, just a, maybe a little bit more than 2 billion people who have never had an adequate or a complete witness of the gospel. It's never been, it's the, either it's been a distorted presentation or they've never heard of Jesus because in many cases, these countries, it's illegal to be a Christian or to talk about Christ. And the church is either underground or, or maybe even not even present in some places. And then there are those people living in countries that Christianity, it's, it's fine for someone to be a Christian. It's legal, but it just isn't practiced very much anymore like in Europe or even, believe it or not, even here in the United States, it's possible to live in the United States, be raised up in the United States, and to have never heard the gospel even once. I was that person. When I was 15 years old, living in Antioch, California, no one had ever shared the gospel with me even once. But praise God, there was that man who acted like a missionary in the wheelchair in Contra Loma Reservoir who handed me that gospel track, and that was the first time in my entire life I had ever heard the gospel. How could I have ever put my faith in Jesus if I never heard of him? I simply couldn't have. And so it says, you know, Someone has to go and preach, like that man in that wheelchair. And what we do in missions is we support people who are going out into the, all the world and preaching the gospel. Some of them here in the United States of America, because there are people here in the United States who need to be saved, amen. And then some of them around the world, uh, some countries have already got the Christian church in it, and they go to assist the Christian church and continue to evangelize people that have not been reached. And others, they're going to places where there are no churches or where they're planting churches in areas without churches. And so we, we pool our resources. We pray. God speaks to us. He tells us what he wants us to give to support missions. And then we send those dollars believing that God is going to keep his promise, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that if Jesus is preached, then people will be able to hear about him. And if they're able to hear about him, then they'll be able to believe in him. And if they believe in him, they'll be saved. That is cross-cultural. The cross is the culture of missions. And that's why here at Oak Park Christian Center, we make such a big emphasis to spend two Sundays a year talking about missions and dedicate ourselves to making a faith promise. Hey, I want you to take a few moments to break in your small group and talk about this. And uh, thanks again for coming tonight.